Happy Tuesday! Excited for today's chat. First ever collaboration with another podcast. Very excited. We're going to be talking to Tony with Spill the Cheer podcast. Uh, very excited for the first collaboration and uh, going to hear his story and kind of hear about Spill the Cheer, how it came about, uh, and the plans for it. So very excited for that. But as every coach says, let's do this one more time and let's go full out. And with that, we are live. So let's bring in Tony from Spill the Cheer Podcast. Tony, what's up? How you doing? Not much. Good First of all, your intros are sick, <laughs> my man. They, I love the energy. I, I love the energy it. you bring. It is contagious. You well, know? I, I I wish I had that energy. God, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. No, I. <laughs> Some people say the intro is their favorite part. I don't know what to think about that, but that's okay. <laughs> the music. Where, where did you get the music? Hey, you interviewed him. Mr. Mark Coleman, Moorhead State. Mark, I knew it. I yep. knew it was Mark. Could you hear the voiceovers? Do you that here sound like Mark? <laughs> no, I just, I, so when I interviewed him, um, he talked, he, he, he does true music too. So yep. I was like, I was like, oh, he, he does it for schools. So that's what I was like. You guys are like best friends. So I'm like, I kind of figured maybe Mark did it. But yeah. I wasn't really sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, we'll talk about, I mean, it's, first of all, again, thanks again, man. I was super excited to do a, a kind of a first collaboration here with, uh, with another show. And I think first you're doing one. a great job also. And I, I, I've listened to some of your episodes. It's been, it's been great. And, and uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, I just think that, you know, in the world of, of cheerleading, um, you know, there's just so many interesting people out there, you know, and there's some, so, so many great stories. stories. Yeah. There's so many stories, so many untold stories. And actually, first of all, before we start, I mean, anyone that's like watching right now, thank you so much. Really, really. I mean, for people, I was just going to be on, on Instagram. And for those of you guys watching, thank you so much for really taking the time and just listening. Um, and once again, like you said, what's up? Uh, what's up? Uh, I don't know. What? Oh, yeah. Um, like, like you said, first time doing this. I was kind of like, ooh, first time being on a podcast. Because like, <laughs> I'm the one doing the questions. I'm the one hosting it. And I was like... Oh, now I'm in it. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. Thanks so much. First of hey. all, really, 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 a lot for you reaching out to me because I'm just a average dude, honestly. <laughs> I know I, you're welcome. And, uh, you know, just to give a little teaser for, to people in a few weeks, you'll be interviewing me. So I'm excited for that too. And we'll, oh we'll, yeah, we could chat about that later, but, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't know if you've listened to the show much, but you know, for me, it's all about the stories. That's kind of why I, I started this. I just want to hear people's story and um, you know, and that's kind of what I want with you, man. I just kind of hear your background, hear your story and how you got into cheerleading. Uh, but then also ultimately, like, you know, how you got into spill the cheer and you know, what, spill what was the, what, cheer. what was the, what was the mindset behind that and everything? But you know, let's, let's, st let's start the, uh, let's start from the beginning, man. You know, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? And, uh, you know, yeah. we'll get into, you know, what did you do? Did you play any other sports in high school or anything? And oh, then, yeah. And then, well, yeah, we'll talk about that first. I got a bunch of stuff, guys. Now, for all of you guys listening, make sure you stay, because this is going to be a saucy content right here. This is going to be an amazing story. Well, not a main story, but it's going to be funny the way how Spill the Cheer started. Mm -hmm. Trust me. You, you guys want to stay. But uh, so, first of all, my name is Tony, obviously. Uh, it's, it's Juan Antonio. That's mm -hmm. my, actual, my actual name. Uh, people call me Tony because of Antonio. It's shorter. And I don't know why my parents just started calling me Tony. Mm -hmm. And um, so I grew up in Illinois. So okay. that's, I've always been, I've always been that guy close to Chicago, like maybe 40 minutes around there. But for me, um, you know, since freshman year, I didn't, I didn't do any sports. I'm a huge okay. gamer, huge gamer. Okay. Not, I don't play as much now because of the podcast mm -hmm. and with like my job. And with all this stuff going on, but if someone asks me to play, I will play. <laughs> so if anyone here listening plays, I will play with you if you want. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, that's kind of me. You know, I started for, I started my freshman year playing football. Football okay. was like my main thing. I was a huge, you know, video games is really what got me to play football. It was like, I had this like game, a, a buddy gave me this like game. It was a uh, Madden 12. It's a football game. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this, this is, this is kind of fun. And it was like eighth grade. So this was before fresh. This was before freshman year of high school. And I was thinking, what if I, what if I did this in high school? And I was just playing this game, and I thought, man, these guys are going pretty fast. It's like, man, I think I can be that fast. And and I was I was pretty big back in like eighth grade, middle school. Mm-hmm. I was I was a pretty big guy. So and I thought I was fast. I thought I could be one of those like fast guys, <laughs> like elusive. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I'm fast. I know I'm fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I've never tested. I've never ran i never did all that stuff so i just figured i was fast and and i and i go and i and i tell my dad hey i want to go into football he's like okay so i go i go into camp and i'm like hey how's it going i'm here for football for the football camp and they're like okay uh what do you want to do i was thinking i want to do like running back type receiver mm-hmm. and those guys are fast yeah right you have to be agile you have to be like versus how to do to be in that position and i was a lineman like i looked like a lineman and i and i worked as a lineman so i was like yeah i want to be i, I want to be a wide receiver they're like what <laughs> uh how about we put you with the old lineman yeah <laughs> i'm like uh okay but i can be i can play wide receiver right they're like yeah yeah we'll decide after camp yeah I'm like okay 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 cool cool so i'm going in the, i'm in the o-line i'm kind of having fun and then i asked coach coach so can i play wide receiver and he's like tony you're now he, he said it kindly he's like you will work you're fi- you're better at playing o-line and pushing people around uh-huh rather than catching the ball right now maybe next year I'm mm-hmm. like, and at that point i was like i don't know if i want to do this anymore but the, the high school that i went to now, any high school, I mean, I, I'm pretty blessed to, to go to the high school that I went to, which is Barrington. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty blessed because oh, yeah, that Barrington, place great area. You, great area, yeah. Mm-hmm. You've, uh, that, that's kind of oh, where yeah. you recruit, right? Kind of yep. like I, 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 I mean, Ice Barrington's over there, so I recruit Ice, obviously, a lot. Um, hey, Coach Connors but, here. Yeah, but my, uh, my, um, my really good friend in college, one of my roommates, is from Conant High School. Is where he grew up. Conant. Yep, he yes. went to Conant High School. So I know, yeah, I know the the Illinois Chicago Burb area pretty well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, head coach uh, from UK is here. I mean, I'm pretty sure she recruits Don, Don, Donovan. I know a lot of people from from Ryan uh, Ryan Ryan Martin O'Connor is, as I say, the first celebrity ever, and uh, she is she's the best. So excited for her. Um, I'm excited, but. But she doesn't need to recruit where I recruit. She doesn't need to go there. So <laughs> people come. Pe- 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 people come. People come to her. Well, I mean, there's some. There's some kids from from Chicago that are on the team right now, which I'm like, which is Donovan and uh, yep. Danny. Yep, Donovan. Dan- Donovan's ba man. That guy is he's a, a freak. <laughs> he's a beast. I don't know about. I don't know about playing video games because I played a couple times with him. So he's not. He needs to work on that part, but. Overall, the cheerleader, amazing person. Um, right, Ryan right. just yeah. said she's going to be all over that area. And that's, okay, you know what? I mean, I'm hey, telling you. All's, all's fair in love and recruiting. And I get it. No, <laughs> I love you, Ryan. Hey, Coach Connor, <laughs> that, I'm, t- hey, the Midwest is kind of taking over little I, by little. I agree. No, here's the deal. I, I totally agree with you, Tony, because for a while there, it was all about the South. And it was all about the South, all about the South, which I totally understand. I forgot about that. You know, but then all of a sudden, you know, East Coast started getting really good, and then the West Coast, and then the Midwest, you know, and then, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Midwest teams started winning nationals, started winning UCA, you know, at the high school and the college level. And so, I mean, it's it's gotten, it's just gotten huge. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many, there's, there's so many of them. I mean, I'm just, I'm just static for the Midwest uh, to see where that goes and really, really, I don't know. I mean, for them to go to some of the big schools, uh, Ole Miss is here. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure there's a couple. If not, then Jalen, what are you doing? Go out there and recruit <laughs> some of the guys from Midwest. Let's represent Illinois. So I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah. So going back to my story. So, so yeah. So no, I love it. <laughs> so so they're like, you want to be a receiver? They're like, you're O line. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you're an O line man. Oh, I, yep. I had fun though. The the whole freshman year, I didn't get into cheerleading my senior year. But basically, I did all. I did all the, the sports. I did football. I did rugby. 
Rugby is awesome. Jackie, what is up? Thank you for coming to the po- to the show. Um, and basically, I had so much fun. I wasn't even thinking about cheerleading. And I know a lot of people think, hey, cheerleading is just, you know, it's just a girl sport. It's just the pom-poms and all that. And that's, I thought that was kind of like it, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't think it was for guys. Because there was like, there was like two guys on the team, but I didn't see the guys. I, was it, mid- was it, Bar- has Barrington won co-ed state before? Has, oh, was it, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, they're, yes, they're pretty yes. big in co-ed. Yes, that's what I thought. But me being, me not knowing, Jalen, what's up? Um, me not knowing, like, I wasn't aware, you know, mm-hmm. I wasn't even aware about football as much. I, you know, the fact that I said I wanted to become a wide receiver and I was pretty big, you know, I clearly, I clearly didn't know a lot about sports, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and so, for people that don't know, Illinois high school cheer is crazy. It is intense. It is crazy in Illinois. Uh, it's, it's intense. It's, it's intense. I don't know about the South, though. I think the South is, like, scary, like, scary good. I mean, like Alabama, like Jalen's from Alabama, like Jalen, like I know, like Alabama, Kentucky, like Florida. I mean, yeah. I I know, like like Georgia. Georgia is a state where they're a sports; so they're not allowed to compete at nationals, which is a shame because there's okay. so so many really good Georgia high school teams out there. But I've heard the same about Georgia high school state is just crazy. Like it's crazy. It's so intense. Um, I'm it's, so it's unaware made, of this stuff. Yeah, like, you know, it's, crazy. it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, and Illinois is another one. Illinois, a lot of te- no teams go to nationals because they're an official sports. You know, so that they mm-hmm. don't they, they're not allowed to go to nationals. And so it's it's a shame. There's such great talent there, but um, but if it's an official sport, you know, I mean, I get it. You know, they're trying to win state championships. So yeah, no, I think. Uh, I mean, I don't know about the future. I mean, I want to coach a bit, but I don't know. But basically, Barrington was was a big time was co-ed and i didn't know at the time but mm-hmm. my coach is amazing stand out like amazing person i owe her a lot for my career and what i've what i've been through and uh so yeah so it, I, i'm going into my junior year i'm working hard i'm getting ready to to go into varsity you know start my mm-hmm. senior year of high school mm-hmm. i'm excited i'm static this was meant for me like the the returners you know they they graduated there was one spot left and that was mine. And I knew that I was going to take it. I worked hard Uh, at the end of the junior year. um, I was lifting for a test Mm -hmm. and this is a football test. We all do those tests. Like after the football season's over to see where you're at and see where you want to be at the end of the year. And I was squatting around 285. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me warm up with around 260 warm up. Mm -hmm. The most it is, it's it's it was dumb it was dumb for my side for just going at and just start you know Mm -hmm. warming up with that much weight i said you know what let's do it i do it and i get hurt Mm -hmm. i i i I hear like a pop in my um hear a pop in my back like lower back and i'm like Mm -hmm. that does not feel good at all Mm -hmm. and i'm like you know what I think it's fine. So I ended up doing the test, mm-hmm. but it kind of hurt then. And I thought it was just sore. I was like, you know what? Ah, no big deal. Days like like the next day, I was sore. Oh, my back hurt so much. I couldn't really walk. And this was still my mindset was like, oh, I'm sore. Not a big deal. Mm-hmm. I'll let it rest for two days. And that's it. I'll come back and lift. Because and my mindset was, I want to get better for football. I want to start. This is this has been something I've been working for the past three years. Mm-hmm. Haven't had a chance to start a, f- a football game, uh, freshman, sophomore, and junior year. So my redemption was right there, ready to go. And a couple a couple of days later, I just couldn't move as much. Mm-hmm. I hurt so bad that I was going to class, and pain, so much pain. And I asked my dad, "Dad, I don't, I don't feel good. I don't think." And I went to the trainers. They said. You might be sore and stuff. Let it rest. I'm like, okay, I trust. I, you know, I trust the trainers. Mm-hmm. But it was more than that. I started realizing it was, it was worse when I started going to a, like a chiropractor, and I was like, and then I got the X-rays and I got MRI taken. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you have a herniated disc. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> Tell me, I have a herniated disc. There's no way, coach. There's no yeah. way, chiropractor or PT, whoever it is. There's no way I can – this is happening. Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, okay, how long till I'm back? 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just tell me how much it is, and then I'll do the, I'll do the therapy. 
Yep. Like it might take you know a couple of months. It really depends on your body. It depends on how it heals back, how fast it goes. So it took like around three or four months mm-hmm. to really get the process. But I still wasn't same. I still had pain in my back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was no way. And then this was junior year around March. March. I had my physics teacher. Her name is Coach Hawk. Coach Hawkins. Mm-hmm. We call it Coach Hawkins, but uh, she is a physics teacher. I had her. It was around my seventh period, I think. And she's like, "Hey, Tony, you should do. Do you want to do cheerleading?" I'm like, "What? Mm-hmm. Cheerleading? Me? No way. No way. No way. No way. I'm a. And at this point, I'm contemplating whether or not to not to quit football mm-hmm. or continue because my back was just hurting so. Like it, it was just hurting so bad. I just the pain." I was wearing like a back brace too, third, like in high school. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was like, wait, I'm contemplating about quitting football. There's no way I'm going to switch over to cheerleading and just leave my leave the football team like that. Because yeah. mm-hmm. they've done so much for me in a way where it's undescribable. Because, um, for example, so I'll tell you the story real quick. My So my mom lives in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, I, so she lives in Mexico right now. And uh, she, at that time, I haven't seen her for almost eight years. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So, it, so it, it it was it was a lot. It was mm-hmm. a lot of time. But it was at that time. And so one of my coaches, it was it was a meeting. Okay, I'm gonna pause mm-hmm. the chilling part, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get into this part because this okay. part is kind of relates to my decision and switching to yeah. chilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was junior year. It was around September. So it was, it was that time. We, we have meetings every week uh, before a football game. Mm-hmm. Uh, before Friday football game, we have a Monday meeting. We talk about the values, the cores. So we have a like, big, gigantic like book. And each week we talk about something like family, mm-hmm. hard work, leadership. One week it was family. It was, I was like, wow, family. This, this really means a lot. It hit home because for me, family means everything. Mm-hmm. You know, my family, my friends, Anyone, anyone that I see as a friend is considered to me family, you know, no matter what, if you need anything, I will help you. And, uh, we we're, we're in the classroom and then we, each person has to say something about the word of the day. And I'm like, I know I can say a lot of stuff about family. So once that one, one of my friends got done talking, I raised my hand and I'm like, I'll go. Mm-hmm. And I went, and uh, this this gets super emotional. I went and I started talking why why this football team means a lot to me, why you guys have made me a better person, and has pushed me to the boundaries that I never thought ex- existed. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so grateful. And then I started talking about my family. I don't know why I I brought up my family, um, in a way where you know. Because that that time, my that football team was my family. Because I knew mm-hmm. my mom wasn't there, my siblings weren't there with me, so they were my brothers and sisters. You know, anyone, the trainers or anything, um, and the coaches were like my parents. So that's I got so emotional when I started talking. I started bawling my eyes. I, I, I started <laughs> yep. crying. Dude. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, this this family means a lot to me, and I just. I'm just so grateful. And I said all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't even finish the sentence. I couldn't. It was so hard. And th- some of the guys on the team, were not, the D linemen, because I was a D lineman at yep. that time, they were crying. Mm-hmm. They were actually like, they felt it because I felt it. One of my coaches was like, wow, this, uh, this is not what we expected, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but they, they knew me because I'm a hardworking person. I mean, I might, I might not be the best, but if if we go one on one in something, uh, what, like Will Smith says it perfectly. Like in 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 one of his videos, he has an interview where if I, if I'm in a treadmill and hitting the treadmill, you better believe that I'm gonna stick until I die. Like I will, like for example, I might not be the best cheerleader, and I'm not, but if I have to do a hundred toss hands till till I pass out, I would do it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm that competitive. Um. But yeah, I mean that's kind of, that's kind of like that that day and that day it was it was the uh, very next day. He he's my coach coach Pullman. He says, "Tony, coach and I, you know, we we felt motivated, you know, your your story just it motivated us and he bought me a plane ticket 
to go see my mom. Really? And oh, your high your high school yeah. coach did that. My high school coach did that. That's unbelievable! Now, wow. Now I was like, dude, I'm getting the chills right now from talking about it. Wow. But I, that day, I just gained so much. Like, I had so much respect for all this, for the whole program and for the whole high school. Mm-hmm. But the respect just went even higher than, be- than before. And um, since that day, I just, I've had a different mind, different outlook in life. And like, wow, people are willing to do this to you because, because of what you're doing and like just where you come from Mm -hmm. you know i want to do the same thing for people i want to do the same thing for you know just for anyone really anyone that that, that's willing to to share their story uh but yeah i mean that's that's kind of that's kind of where it went with was that your head football coach or your no that was my d coach my d lineman coach yeah and so we shared we share the offense defense so d lineman and the special teams were together in that Mm -hmm. room and what was his name Coach Pullman and Coach Smith. Smith, the D lineman, he played in the NFL. And Pullman, he played baseball in Northwestern. So, yeah. Well, Coach Pullman and Coach Smith, you guys are unbelievable men. Holy cow. I, that is I was like, that's dude, awesome. There's, that's un- there's no way. Yeah, there's that is no so way. great. Um, it, was, it was definitely worth it. So, obviously, football meant a lot to you. But as you were saying, you were kind of getting recruited for cheerleading then at the time. Yeah. And so, I mean, so. Let's cheer. <laughs> talk up, yeah. Talk about maybe that. Here's what I always say. I always say this. Guys, all of us guys, for the most part, have kind of the same mindset. Like, oh, guys do this thing? Like, yeah. is, it, is it something that's cool? Like, we, you know, we don't know. Mm-hmm. But I, I always say, like, when we're recruiting guys here on campus, uh, which we still do. We still try to get guys out of the weight room, you know, and stuff like that. You know, I always say, like, they'll know at one open gym within 30 minutes if they love this or not. Like, they'll just know, you mm-hmm. know. And so kind of talk about the first time you walked into that cheer gym. You walked into a gym and did, yeah. some, did something cheerleading. So, okay, so let me tell you before that, before what happened. Uh, so Hawkins, my coach, mm-hmm. she kept pushing me to join, right? It, was, it, it took her two weeks to, to finally convince me to say mm-hmm. yes. Every single day in class, she was like, you want to join cheer? Come on, just join a practice. You don't have yep. to join the team. Yep. Just come to a practice. Yep. Just one open gym. Mm-hmm. It won't kill you. It won't hurt you. And I was like, uh, you know what? I'll go to shot. My back's feeling a little bit better. Why not? So I go, and I, I'm I'm shy. I'm like, uh, there's a bunch of girls here. <laughs> there's no guys because I don't know. And the guys, I think they were doing a different sport at at that time. Uh huh. Uh, and they're like, oh hey Tony, how's it going? And I'm like, uh, hi, uh, Tony. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh. Yeah, Coach Hawkins is the reason why I'm here. Uh, that's the only reason why. He's like, oh, don't worry. Here, come, come, come check this out. Okay. I did a cartwheel. It was the worst cartwheel in my life. Uh-huh. I think the worst in the world. It was terrible. And I, my confidence was just kind of going down because like, oh, God, they're not, they're not as good as the other girls. Mm-hmm. And they're like, okay, you know what? Let's try some quad, some quad stunting. Uh, do you guys call it like that, quad Group stunning, quad stunning, sure. Group I've heard stunning, both. Yeah. I've heard both. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Tori, how's it going, Tori? Uh, but yeah, so I kind of did that, and I was like, man, this is kind of fun. Mm-hmm. We're doing, we're going up to half. Yep. Then we're going up to extensions. I'm like, wow, dude, I'm picking up a girl. Like, we're mm-hmm. all doing this like cool stuff. And they're like, hey, let's try some coed stunting. Yep. I'm like, uh, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Like, okay, so basically, you just have to pick up this girl. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, okay, cool, cool. So I, so we're working on this, on this done. And it took me 12 reps. I, I, I remember exactly how many it took me. 12 reps. Because the three, the, after the, four, five, the first five failed, mm-hmm. almost got it close to the fifth one. The open gym was about, to, was about to be over. Yep. And I was like, no, 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 no. Let me get one more. Yeah, one, one more. And, that's one more, yeah. And that is where my, <laughs> that's where my addiction started, started yep. coming in. And they're like, all right, one more. And then I was so close, the sixth one. Then the seventh one was even closer. I'm like, no, no, just give me one more, I swear. And they're like, last one, but that is it. Yep. And then the 12th and the 12th rep, I hit it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. And I started, like, shaking, like, my hands, uh-huh. like, the whole body was like, <laughs> dude, I hit this. And they're like, and I'm like, they're like, all right, pop it down. I'm like, uh, what do you mean pop it down? And like, mm-hmm. no, po- like, pop it down. Oh, we did not teach, we, we did not teach Stone how to pop it down. Pop down. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay. They're like, all right, just do one, two, and, cra- and grab like the waist or whatever. 
and she didn't drop she didn't fall but it was an awkward awkward toss uh-huh. but th- at that moment i knew that the coach was like we have him we have him hooked he's got exactly the, yep. it's part of the team now yep so okay you as as we've talked about you went to that first open gym you hit that first really cool stunt and you're like this is freaking awesome i love this um so you finished out the high school season then on the team yeah, so I ended okay. up switching to cheerleading that year, mm-hmm. and it was a tough one because I was like, didn't want to leave the football team, but, but I knew I knew I, I could have done both mm-hmm. if I really wanted to, fall football, and then. But I said, you know what? Let's stick to cheerleading. Let's try to work really hard because mm-hmm. they convinced me in a way where I can earn a scholarship from this. Mm-hmm. I can earn, you know, in a way. I knew I wasn't going to become a football player. That was no way, like not even D three, D, you know. And I wasn't planning on to because, mm-hmm. I know, football, you know, it's kind of dangerous mm-hmm. in a way where, you know, there's a chance you could get hurt. There's a mm-hmm. chance you could – your brain or concussions. And I, luckily for me, I'm grateful I did not have any concussions. But, uh, but yeah, cheerleading was like, I'm going to work hard. And my, the teams that I was looking at was LSU. Mm-hmm. LSU was no, my, no, my number one team. Which is your latest podcast, if I'm not mistaken. It was. It, yes, it yes. Was, yep. It was my – you know, all the, all the episodes are my favorite. Mm-hmm. But LSU was definitely one that hit hit home because mm-hmm. uh, I just I worked really hard for that team. That was my main focus. And I uh, Purdue Purdue was was actually one of the schools. Oh. I was looking at a lot of Midwest. Yep, mm-hmm. I was looking at a lot of Midwest. Yep, but Purdue. I mean, I'm not the smartest. Jose, <laughs> what's up, my man? <laughs> um, I was the smartest. I was, you know, I was. So Purdue, it's a pretty, it's a very well known school. It's a tough Engineering. school. Yep, yep, tough school to get in. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, let's. Uh, Scratch that one out of the uh, <laughs> list, and I kind of, I just, I just felt like going with LSU. I looked at ISU, I looked at U of I. Yep, you got to do that. You got in-state stuff, absolutely. Yeah, you know, look a lot, a lot of schools. So I worked really hard, and then, um, and then I went to tryouts, LSU, and then actually, another story, another amazing story. I'm grateful for these people. One of my friends, uh, I've known him since freshman year. Basically, his mom are super close. We're super close uh, in a way where they invite me to the lake house or whatever a couple mm-hmm. times. And I told him about the news. Like, hey, uh, I, I got an invitation to try out for LSU because I got an email from, like, Captain U. I don't know if mm-hmm. you guys use that at all. Yep. For mm-hmm. the high school. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, I got an invitation. I'm like, oh, my God. They want me to come and try out. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I told him, I'm like, hey, I got this, I got this invitation. You should go. Um, and I'm like they were saying i should go i was like oh, i don't know i should go i don't have that much money mm-hmm. and i didn't have that much money and i didn't want my parents to pay for anything like my, my dad at the at the time didn't want to pay for it you know i don't think i'm gonna go you mm-hmm. know i think it's pretty cool but i started thinking it's too expensive you know mm-hmm. out of state uh because that's i had a different mindset at this point because like lsu was fun and all but at the end of the day it's a lot of money out of state yeah. no way yep and they're like you know what my friend was like we'll pay for the trip Go and try out for LSU. I'm like, wow, get out of here. You're <laughs> not going to pay for the trip. Like, we want you to go and experience it. The worst thing that can happen is that you don't make the team, and you just ha- that's the worst thing that can happen. Mm-hmm. The best thing that can happen is you went, you tried out, you experienced what LSU is. Mm-hmm. You know, you saw Mike the Tiger, you saw the coaches, you know, you just knew people. And it was like the best time of my life going there and mm-hmm. trying out. Uh, there's a video of me uh, on their page. Young me, actually. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't look nothing like that guy anymore. Wow, who is that guy? Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of where, where I kind of go with like cheerleading. So mm-hmm. I applied for all these schools. No schools accepted me. I said, like, man, this sucks. <laughs> this sucks. Because <laughs> uh, LSU didn't accept me at the end of the day. I applied and I, I didn't accept me. I didn't have like the grades for them. I was like, okay, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I ended up going to his private, a private school. That okay. private school, I mean, private schools, they're, they're not bad. It was just, it mm-hmm. wasn't meant for me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I like the people there, but yeah, that's kind of where my college cheerleading started going. Yeah. Private mm-hmm. school. Okay. Is that in Illinois then? Was it in Illinois? Or no, that was in no. Michigan. Actually, oh, sorry. it was. That okay. Was so, so now that you're was in Michigan. Okay. So you are in Michigan now. Yeah. Okay. So I'm in Adrian, Michigan. First yep. year, freshman year. Loved it. Because of the friends, mm-hmm. uh, cheerleading which just wasn't it. I was still in the mindset of like, hey, I want to work hard. I want to get good. Where should I go? And freshman year, I only had like 30, no, 20 credits. Okay. I only had 20 credits. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't enough 
to transfer, transfer. Yep. And, and take my college credit. So I had yep. to give them, I had to give another college that and my high school stuff. I was like, oh God, this is, mm-hmm. this is going to suck because <laughs> like my high school stuff is not the best. Um, and yeah, I applied for Michigan State. And I don't know, Michigan State just, I went to the open gyms because at the time I wasn't happy with the cheer team that I was at mm-hmm. first in the private school. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It just, we, I just didn't have the same mentality. We weren't in the same frequency. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm more of a hardworking person and more of a, let's get this. I want to get this in. It was just, it wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. So I saw an opportunity to open gym at Michigan State. I'm like, oh, you know what? My friend lives over there. Let's go, let's go visit and mm-hmm. go for the open gym. First open gym. I loved it. I was like, yep. I'm going to, I'm going to apply here. Mm-hmm. I applied. Now I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to say it here. My ACT was a 16. Mm-hmm. 16, that's terrible. That's terrible, Steve. I mean, but here's the deal. Uh, but, here's mean, the deal. but you're a freshman. You're a freshman in college. And I, I tell people this all the time. There's a lot of people that look at Purdue and they're like, I don't have the grades or I don't have the test scores. And they don't. And that's okay. But I always say, yeah. like, if you really want to go to a bigger school, there's nothing wrong with going to a smaller school for a year because it is easier to transfer in to a bigger school from another college. Yeah. It is. It's much easier. I, so, yeah. And honestly, here's the, and, here's the, and honestly, like, people are starting to phase out the ACT, SAT scores because just some people are just not – Oh, yeah. It's just you're, one, bad, you know, one bad day and you're, you're telling a kid they can't go to a college. I mean, just because of one – maybe one bad test. I mean, yeah. I, you know, people have different opinions on it. Um, it is think, what it is. Honestly – Going into that, I was like, you know what? What's the worst thing that can happen? Exactly. I get rejected, and mm-hmm. I'm still at the school. I mean, no big deal. Mm-hmm. I applied. I sent all my stuff, high school and college. Yep. I wait two weeks, and I got accepted. I'm like, mm-hmm. no. No way. <laughs> no way. There's no way I got accepted. And I was, now I'm thinking, okay, this is a lot of school. This is mm-hmm. a lot of money. Because mm-hmm. where I was going, I had everything covered for the next yep. four years. I was oh, fine. Wow. Okay. Uh, but I just, I knew something deep down in my heart because going to Michigan state, you're still out of state then. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. But they don't help me since it's a private school. Yeah. I got recruited to cheer at that private school. Oh, and they, kinda, they gotcha. They okay. kind of helped me in a way where yep. they can give me, uh, like scholarship, yep. scholarship in a way where it's like, it's school, like yep. education and yep. like whatever. And I was like, okay, you know what? I started thinking, I was like, and for all you guys listening, I don't know if you guys have been through this where if your heart is telling you to just take it and take the jump, take the risk. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's something. And I was like, you know what? Let's go. Mm-hmm. Why not? So Why you get not? accepted to Michigan State and yeah. now you're, you're going to Michigan State. So talk, about, talk about your experience, you know, at Michigan deep. State and, and, and cheering there. It's I mean, I've never been to another another big time university, but that's the only one I've been on, and it's the best, loud, and and something that Coach Spurlock from LSU said. It's magical. Mm-hmm. That school, man, six a.m. workouts, practices. I was so happy. I knew I was I was I was at the right place. Six a.m., six thirty lift or uh, seven fifteen lift. Six a.m. work uh, practice. Mm-hmm. I loved it. And they're like, Tony, why are you so happy? Like, why are you doing that? Like, yep. uh, because I'm at the best school and yep. I actually get to grow and improve. The classes are amazing, phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, MSU, I mean, I to Purdue is the same Big Ten. Yep. But, you know, MSU overall was just an experience that I just so grateful. Didn't turn out the way I wanted to. Mm-hmm. But looking back, it has, it, it has helped me become a better person. Because it, it clearly shaped you. It clearly yeah. shaped you. Mm-hmm whole different mindset i mean anything that you guys do uh for you guys listening anything you do i mean when you have something wrong going your way you can only you can only improve upon it i guess if that makes sense because for me i only lasted there a semester one semester it's best semester of my life Mm -hmm. but i left because i couldn't afford it and it was it was kind of like a scary feeling because it was around it was around this was before nationals. I got a letter saying, hey, you need to pay this amount or you're going to get this enrolled. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, I don't have that amount. So mm-hmm. I might have to disenroll. Yeah. And um, this was before nationals. And I didn't want to tell my coach, Coach Elise Pagger. And I, I, her I, her, I, love, I love Coach Elise. 
I love her. She's great. Amazing coach. Grateful. And there's another thing about her I can share that with. But I was uh, – it was before Nationals, guys. Mm-hmm. Okay? Before Nationals. If you don't, if you don't have the grades or something like a role, you cannot go to Nationals. Yep. At all. Right, I think is that is that what you guys do as well. If you yep. guys don't have like yeah, there are, standards. We, yep, yep. I mean, it depends on the school. I mean, but some schools follow NCAA protocols, which that's yeah. what we do. You know, some schools have their own, but yeah, I mean, there there is always some sort of a grade standard usually. Yep. I was like, and and I had the grade. Don't get me wrong, I had the grade. I just wasn't, I wasn't going to be enrolled um, for, second, for second semester. For second semester, and I think in nationals was, it's been a while, but basically, I was I was kind of scared of that about mm-hmm. that, and I was like. I, I, I can't tell Coach Elise. I can't tell her that I'm not enrolled and not, and not be able to go to nationals because mm-hmm. it's, it's been my dream to go to nationals. I'm like, yeah. all right, the fire is already burning. Like, the, <laughs> like my house is like, it's already like burning at this point. Like, let me at least, at least enjoy UCA. Mm-hmm. That's all I ask. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, all right, everything's going well. So I ended up going to UCA. Obviously, I had a good time, mm-hmm. blah, blah, all that stuff. I come back and I'm like, oh crap! Now I got to deal with this fire. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> yep. like everything was just burning down, and that's that's how I was looking at it. And then two weeks later, I get a letter in my door saying, "Hey, you're gonna get evicted in two weeks." Oh my goodness! Wow. You have you have two weeks to get out. Well, they didn't they didn't say that, but they say yeah. said, "Hey." Uh, just let you guys know if you don't, if you're not enrolled, you, mm-hmm. you have to leave in two weeks. You have to I'm leave. Like, yeah. Oh, great, great, mm-hmm. great. My God, you got to be kidding me. So I had that thing on top, and I didn't want to leave. Like I, I knew I found the school that I wanted to go. So man. it's like you it's s- it's like you're at the ultimate high, and then all of a sudden, oh, like, is the ultimate. My low. God, yeah. dude, I was so blessed. Yeah. At that time, I was like so blessed. Like, man, school, great, mm-hmm. friends. Yep. It couldn't get any better. Big Ten cheerleading. I mean, you're getting cheerleading, the, oh, yeah, man. yeah, like, yeah. Like football games, I was my first year. I was cheering the games. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What can go? There's no way anything can go wrong." And I see this happens, and I'm like, "Wow!" It's like a slap in the face. Like life said, "Hey, wake up!" Because it's not. It's not always gonna be like that. And um, I just, I don't know. It just, it just felt weird. It felt weird <sighs> leaving school. And from there, I just took a whole rock bottom I, I i was i don't know what to do i don't know where to go if i should go back to school you know i just wasn't really sure with the whole process of like because i owe money to the school so it's like it's kind of like a tricky situation if that yeah. makes sense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so basically after i left i was just you know rock bottom i just didn't know what to do uh started gaining weight mm-hmm. started started just not working out started just working a nine to five job mm-hmm and don't get me wrong, nine to five jobs are not bad, but mm-hmm. it was just working that much and then going to play video games. Mm-hmm. I was like, dude. And at that time, I thought it was okay. I was like, you know what? I'll go back to school at some point. And I'm just like doing this over and over, and it just sucked. It, it really sucked. But yeah, that's so, kind of where I ended. So we're we're now at the point of your life where it's like, man, okay. But yeah. cl- clearly, something triggered you to. Do something with your life, and then yeah. and then start up start up your your podcast, spill the cheer, and so yeah. I mean, kind of talk about talk about that. You know what what are you doing now, and what was the inspiration, or kind of you know what was the reasoning for starting up spill the cheer? You know, about a year ago, about a year ago, that's when I like I said, you know what, it's enough. This is enough. Mm-hmm. Let's let's get our stuff together. Stuff together. <laughs> yeah, let's get our stuff together. <laughs> I know, I know, I don't, I don't like swearing in my podcast. So I know <laughs> that we fall at tab or not. Um, hey, you know what? It, it, that's I always tell people like, hey, it's a live show, you know, and sometimes things happen. You know, techni- no. <laughs> technical difficulties, sometimes a little word slippage. You know, it's okay. You know, we can always try to edit stuff out later. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So August last year, exactly last year, I said, you know what? Let's change it up. I, I I'm not happy. I'm not happy the way I look. Mm-hmm. You know, because I let myself go. So I started working out, started getting this diet, you know, and I just, I said, you know what, let's just commit to this mm-hmm. for the next five months and see where we're at. Just mm-hmm. commit, mm-hmm. you know, because leaving MSU, uh, for you guys, new guys are joining, uh, you know, I left, I was unhappy, you know, I, I just, I felt like I couldn't commit to something anymore. I felt like I, that, that's something that I still struggle with is 
is committing to something because mm-hmm. I feel like if I commit to something, because like I said, MSU, it had my heart, it had my mind, like it was there and it just got taken away. So for me, it's like, and it's something again, that why I started the podcast. Um, it's the, the commit, the commitment and it just felt weird because I don't know. It just com- com- commitment, basically. Mm-hmm. But I ended up doing working out. I felt good, you know. Blah blah. blah. Um, I'm thinking about going back to school. I'm thinking about where, where to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm still in the process of that. Uh, yep. That's 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 some of the stuff that's behind the scenes right now. Mm-hmm. But it's um that's definitely something I'm going back. Mm-hmm. But I feel good, you know. Right now, uh, how how the podcast started? Yeah. So I just want to go. I want to go fast forward. Is I feel good, man. I'm like, I got the job that I want right now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's treating me right. Mm-hmm. This was around March. And what are, you doing for, what are you doing right now? Uh, we're for an electric, electric company. Okay. I do sales. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, so from home, yep. which is uh, pretty grateful about that. And, so during, I, and during the current situation of our world right now, that definitely would be really nice. I'm grateful. I mean, <laughs> yeah. first of all, I mean, first of all, I mean, for the people that are out there, I mean, the first responders, I mean, the doctors, I mean, the, the hospitals, people that are working, uh, I mean, anyone, even the people that are working at stores, I mean, just grateful mm-hmm. uh, for the stuff they do because I know I get, like I said, I get to do this kind of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. episodes, work from home, uh, not get exposed as much. But, uh, but yeah, I, I started listening to podcasts. I, mm-hmm. I'm not a big podcast guy. Never, 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 never. Back mm-hmm. in March, uh, this, this March, actually, I passed. And I was like, man, this is very interesting. I started listening to Joe Rogan. I don't know if you guys listen to that. That's just a pretty cool mm-hmm. podcast as well. And I was like, mm-hmm. I was like what if they're why why like is there a cheerleading podcast and i i think you started you, your full out chest was already around march right yeah i started during quarantine yeah during uh quarantine? yeah okay. yeah i'll tell so that story when you interview me <laughs> okay so yeah. you were yep. so it was around march and i didn't know about full out chats like i have no idea like i just listened to joe rogan and this one podcast calls impulsive uh but yeah i was like man what if what, why isn't there a trillion podcast? And I started searching trillion podcasts and mm-hmm. I couldn't find one. It was back in March. Uh, I was like, you know what? What if we start one? Huh? Huh? Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, all right, well, screw it. Let's start one. And I asked a couple of friends like, Hey, do you want to do, you want to start the podcast with me, you know, become co host and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I, and they're like, yeah, some people are like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it with you. Whatever. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool. I have, I have someone, I have someone to myself. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Now, let me come up with a name. Let me come up how I'm going to start this podcast, where I'm going to host it. And I started searching all this stuff. It was kind of hard. It was annoying. And at some, I was about to give up, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I started looking at names. I'm like, all right. And well, we started thinking, what should we talk about? You know, uh, so you have to talk about something. Mm-hmm. And at first, at first, Spill the Cheer wasn't Spill the Cheer the way it is now. Mm-hmm. It started with talking about drama, talking about stuff that people can relate to. Mm-hmm. stereotypes mm-hmm. uh for example uh pe- just i don't know just stereotypes that people get that we often yep. get and we just mm-hmm. talk about it in the podcast and mm-hmm. whatever and i thought i thought at that moment, i was like man that's pretty cool i think i think that's gonna get some attraction mm-hmm. and then my friend just didn't even respond to me didn't even say anything and there was no communication and i kind of felt like well if i really want to start this podcast mm-hmm. it, it 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 starts with me not yep. my friends, mm-hmm. not, 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 no one, no one. They can say, hey, you should start a podcast. But if you don't start it, who's going to, who, who's to blame for? Mm-hmm. Some, your friend or myself? It was me. And I, that same mindset I started thinking, you know, I left school, you know, I had to leave school. It's not because of MSU. It was because of me. Mm-hmm. I took the chance. I'm responsible for my mistakes. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And, and thinking like that feels a lot better than blaming Man, I couldn't believe MSU, you know, kicked me out, or I can't believe my friend uh, Marcus, which is his name is not Marcus or she mm-hmm. or he. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just giving out a name. Yeah. yeah, Marcus, I can't believe you didn't help me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I started thinking of names. I'm like uh, cheer in life, chew and cheer. Mm-hmm. I started thinking like, what's the cheer? Yep. You know, all these cells. Like, oh my god, looking back, it's kind of cr- it's kind of cringy. Uh, but I was like, you know what? What if you spill the cheer? Uh huh. Why not spill it here? I mean, spill the tea, you know, yep. obviously you mm-hmm. get it. I was like, because that's where I was thinking with the drama. Then I started thinking, okay, if it's just going to be me. And at this point, I was asking people to join left and right. I was like, mm-hmm. hey, please want to become part of my podcast. And they kept saying yes. And then again, they said, they stopped replying. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, this is a one man job. This is just my, I have to do it now or never. And so I, I started thinking, okay, what should we talk about? Should we still talk about drama? Mm-hmm. And then I started thinking, wait, I love stories that are rock bottom. I love stories that when you are in your lowest and you're at your highest, mm-hmm. it is the best story. I mean, there's a lot of stories. I mean, a success story is always amazing, but when you have, if that success story has some messed up stuff that has mm-hmm. happened in your life, I love that story, man. That that's what makes a great story. So I was like, you know what? Let's talk about that because I have an interest. I have a story like that, you know, from where I started to where I'm at. Who else has a story like that? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, you know what? Let's go ask a bunch of people. Yeah, I kept the I kept DMing some some big time cheerleaders around you know around the state, uh, you know around the country, and and a lot of them didn't reply a lot of them said mm-hmm. no and um and the one person said yes it just took about two weeks mm-hmm. so this whole podcast idea was, was started a month ago mm-hmm. colin good colin dude replies, colin cockerel and the man says, the rhino the rhino he says <laughs> what's up miss sanchez what's up sanchez um i he says yes and i'm like yes at that moment, I I knew I knew I hit the jackpot. I knew I hit the the big time guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and yeah, I mean, since since that episode, he's like, dude, I'm so grateful for you inviting me to the podcast. I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. there's no way he just said that. There's no yeah. way I have like five listeners. There's no way I have you know people following the Instagram because the Instagram's kind of just to promote the videos, to promote the podcast, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. But looking at back now. I think something I would say for people that are listening is if you're not coming out of this quarantine with a new skill or, or with a new project or a new hobby or just anything, like you, you need to go back. You need to stop. Wa- okay. Actually don't stop watching this. Absolutely. Like after this, <laughs> go start something, literally anything. It doesn't mm-hmm. hurt to try. The worst thing that can happen is, Actually, there's no worse thing that can happen. Well, yeah, I agree. It dep- yeah, it depends. You know, for me, it was like I was thinking because I bought the mic, I bought the servers, I bought the podcasting stuff, I bought all this stuff. It's like if I'm gonna go, I have to commit. Mm-hmm. I have to go full out, full out, man. Mm-hmm. Just like your podcast, yeah, absolutely, like, brother. I cannot, I cannot half stuff. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I bought the mic. It was a lot of money. It's a great invest. It's a big investment, but I knew this was worth it, and I knew if I just kept on going. Kept the vision in my head where I wanted. I'm not going to rely on other people. I'm going to mm-hmm. rely on myself. Because at the end of the day, it is my baby. It is my podcast. Something happens, it is my fault. And that is mm-hmm. 100% how I think. Um, if I don't get this episode, if I don't get this, uh, if, I don't, if I don't get the next guest for next week, I'm not going to blame the guest for canceling or rescheduling. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to blame myself because mm-hmm. I relied on one person rather than asking a bunch of people. And making mm-hmm. sure that they were set for that day, you know. So mm-hmm. I, what I like to do is I like to record a lot of episodes, yep, uh, in a week, and then and have just, them scheduled and just have ready them ready. For, Absolutely, yeah, yep. Because I want, you know, spill the cheer. It, there's some big plans coming up, mm-hmm. and then you know, for all you guys following, I mean, listening, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, please. Yeah, but uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's there's definitely some there's definitely some big stuff coming up, you know. Uh, but yeah, because I mean, I'm a subscriber. I mean, I listen to you. I, I think it's a good show. And like I said, I, I, oh, can you hear me now? Oh, you there, Tony? Yeah. There you go. You there? Can you hear me? Yeah. As I said, the, the, the beauty of a live show is sometimes you have a little bit of technical difficulties. That's okay. But I just want to say, I'm a subscriber. I think you do a great job. I love the stories. You've been able to talk to people. Um, we've interviewed some of the same people. And you've also interviewed some people. Uh, yeah. I, I, and I, I, love, I, love, I love hearing their stories. I'm surprised. Just, I don't, want, I don't it, want you to think like there's no uh, – <laughs> like when, I, when I'm looking back. So when I was like, Mark, Mark has an episode. That's when I, went, I clicked on. I'm like, oh, hey. He has an episode. I started listening just to see what Mark kind of liked his story and kind of like what it was. So just so that I was aware of kind of what to expect if you were to mention that kind of stuff. Uh, um, 
yeah. if, if you want if you want stories uh talk to mark coleman he will talk to you oh, for man. hours <laughs> yo okay okay okay, okay. Let, let me tell you this story real quick this was okay, uh yeah. it was that episode i thought it was gonna last 40 minutes oh and I, no. I, I, no, I, no 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 i no, told no. him i was like i was like mark we got uh what's a good time for you he's like oh i can go for days i'm like Okay, uh, 40 minutes. Oh, he can. Fine, right? He can go for okay, days. Yeah. I was like, 40 minutes is good, right? Yeah. Hours. Yeah, I can go for hours. <laughs> I was like, 40 minutes is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 40 minutes. And I had a dentist appointment. And I was like, okay, I have enough time to make sure that there's no problem. Uh-huh. It goes for an hour and 40. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Now, don't get me wrong. I can stay all day and, and yeah. talk to Mark. Yep. Jackie, what's up? Um, I can say all day, but I had a dentist appointment, and I knew I knew two hours was enough in yep. case in case it went over. Yep. Because I've never had anyone go past an hour and thirty. <laughs> an hour and twenty was Mark. <laughs> uh, this was my wisdom. My wisdom teeth was. I was supposed to take them out. I was like, no, this is, uh, I, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah. You there? Okay. No, you were just cutting out there for a second. Um, but no, I, my, so that, that happened exactly with mine and Mark. I, I mean, <laughs> we talked for over two hours just cause we were just, it was just like, it was just like two good friends talking. You know what I mean? That's what it was. And so like all of a sudden the next thing I know, I'm like, Holy cow! And Instagram live cuts you off at an hour. They give like a countdown. They cut you oh, off. Oh, really? So we had a How much time do you got? Re- yeah. We got eight minutes, so we've eight had a minutes? great time. All right, guys, hold on for eight minutes. And so, Mark, you know, we had to start it over twice because we kept running out of the hour, and oh, it, was, it was just awesome. No. And, but that's okay, yes. though. You know, like, and then the beauty of it, you know, especially when you convert it to a podcast or whatever, is you just yeah, you know, put them, just put it together. No big deal, you know. And and um, yeah. but no, man, I I've I've enjoyed. Um, I must say the one thing I've really enjoyed are like your hype videos. Like, so do you have like a, yeah. a, a do you have like a, oh, do you have like a God. video? Do you have a video background or do you hire that out or? No, I make all that. I make okay. anything from the podcast, anything spill the chair related. I mm-hmm. do it all. Yep. Uh, it's a lot of time. Let me, guys, 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 listen to this. Okay. A video, Mark, I mean, Steve, Steve, a video, like the LSU one, the first LSU video mm-hmm. took me five, five hours. <laughs> Five hours, dude. And I'm gonna tell you why. I'm a perfectionist. Yep. I literally, if something doesn't look right, I'm gonna, I will go back and change it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if any of you guys are like that, but this video, I, I wanted to be, make it epic. I wanted to make it feel like, wow, this is actually giving me goosebumps. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if for you guys listening, do not know what I'm talking about, uh, go to if you guys go to my Instagram, check the first video, uh, not the first one, the second one, I'll see you. Mm-hmm. You'll see what I'm talking about. But I try to keep my videos under a minute because mm-hmm. I don't want them to be long IGTV videos. I just want to make mm-hmm. it one minute. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it takes me – now, the reason why it takes me five hours is because I need to find the clip. I need to trim it down to a minute. I need to edit it out, make sure it's kind of, it feels kind of like, okay, this is what I'm going to expect for the, for the episode. Mm-hmm. And editing, I, uh, I use iMovie. And then uh, I use some some uh, canvas and stuff. I use a lot of a bunch of stuff too. Really, I use canvas a lot. Canvas is a great app for anybody out there that's looking to make some just really quick, simple but beautiful. Like I, all mm. of my stuff, like all the all the stuff that I put out is through Canvas app. It's awesome. It's a free app. Yeah. But it's awesome. Yeah, I love the Canvas app. Yeah. Same. I use I use iMovie too. I've done I've done a couple of videos. Like I did one for Whitney. I see one. What, what happened? You got to keep making more. Um. Well, I just need videos from people. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, but I made one for Whitney Love. And I mean, I, my, my background is actually journalism. So I've, I've, used, I've used like Avid and um, yeah. Final Cut Pro and stuff like that for I, years. Honestly, so. they're, they take a lot of time. They do. But I do mm-hmm. it because I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really do enjoy it. I'm, I've stayed up till 5 a.m. to work on, on, on I think you have a gift, buddy. I, I think you have a gift. I think you should look into that also, man. There's nothing wrong with making some videos. I think you do a great job with your videos. Uh, I don't mind it at all, really. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really fun. I mean, it takes a lot of time. Don't get me wrong. It takes a lot mm-hmm. of time, but at the end of the day, it's to promote, to promote the podcast, promote the episode, and I think mm-hmm. it's like something new. I don't know if it's, people have done that where, I don't know, like in the, in the cheerleading like, world, kind of like, mm-hmm. because you don't see that many like videos where like people are talking and then you have this and then, I don't know. I just think I was 
think outside the box, guys. Mm-hmm. All right, think outside the box. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, we'll cheer that. Yeah, that's that's kind of where we're going. Uh, big stuff coming up. Good. Uh, can't, I can't. Anything, I can't really I, say. I would say any, I, if, you, if you need a wait, awesome. But obviously, this is your time. Anything that you want to plug or anything that is coming up that you can talk about? Um. Besides, besides, as I already, um, as I already mentioned, as a teaser, like we've set up our dates, so I'll I'll be yeah. interviewed by you in a no, few guys. weeks, which will oh, hey, be fun. Just here. Um. But yeah, yeah it, I mean. I, I, like I said, I think you're doing a great job. I, I was excited to do finally a, a, a cross-promotional between two shows. I think that the more shows we have, the better. I, I, I just think that there's so many great stories out there. Um, there's not that many podcasts. Oh, truly podcasts. I could be wrong. No, there is actually – I lied. There's all-star podcasts out there. But some of them – I'm not trying to call them out, but some of them are not consistent. Mm-hmm. Okay, you, my friend, you are consistent. I, I, so believe me, when <laughs> you are too. By the way, you come out what every we both are. Is it Tuesday and Thursday or what? What Monday, Monday Wednesday, and Friday? Monday, Friday. Okay, Fridays are for athletes. Yep. Mondays are for coaches. Okay. Uh, I have a big, I have a big guest, which I'm not going to say it here. Uh, mm-hmm. it's it's going to be kind of a surprise, like last minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. You'll you'll see them, but yeah, it's awesome. kind of like Fridays and Mondays. You're leaving me hanging, bud. You're leaving me hanging here, man. Hey, that's that's all. That's that's what spill the cheer is. That's called uh, the spill teaser. The cheer. That's the teaser. Absolutely. Yeah. Spill the cheer is change the narrative. Mm-hmm. That's that's a saying of the pod. That's spill yep. the cheer. Mm-hmm. Change the narrative. Yep. Because uh, like I said, all these athletes I've interviewed, there's just there's a unique story. Yeah. And anyone listening, if you know someone with an interesting story, let mm-hmm. us know. Absolutely. And, um. But Mulch. I mean, <laughs> I, I I will say like yeah, I mean, we, I was cranking out episodes because you know quarantine just started and it was a great chance for all of us during quarantine to like catch up with old friends and just tell yeah. stories, you know. And you know, my first hurt. my first interview was Lindsey Bracken, coach at Oklahoma State, and it was just nice to talk to her, you know. Mm-hmm. And and my second episode was Jomo Thompson, you know, and it, that Come was on. it was great to catch up with him. And it just he's it someone was, I want on the podcast. It was <laughs> awesome. It was awesome to just reconnect with old friends, you know, and, and to talk to mm-hmm. people and, and then meet new friends, man. Like I like Colin Cockrell, great example. Never met him in my life. Never, never met him. Never met did him. You, wait, do you think his voice was different on like like versus in, in person, person or yeah? I thought he was gonna be like, yeah, <laughs> hey Tony, <laughs> no. what's up? You know, the, I, the most humble guy you'll ever meet oh, is Colin Cockrell. Amazing, dude. Yeah. And then like Nicole Nichols, Lindsay, co- coach up? at coach at uh, West Georgia, never met her before, but was able to talk to her through this. Yeah. So I get it, man. Like, it's just all about creating these connections and telling these stories and just love it. and letting people see our world, you know, from, from our point of view. And, yeah. um, you know, like, and, and also like <laughs> a really good friend of mine is uh, Ben Schreiber. You interviewed Ben. Ben, yes. Ben, but ben, Ben. He told a couple stories during, I was like, I didn't even know that. And I've known Ben for like 10, 10 years plus. You know what I mean? So like. In your I, podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. like, you know, you, I get to learn stuff about my friends, which has just been really awesome. And so I just want to say, man, you've been doing a great job. I, I go, go subscribe up. everybody to uh, Spill the Cheer podcast. It's awesome. Um, he does a great job. I love your videos. I love all the hype stuff you do. And we'll, we'll, you. We'll, I'm sure we'll collab again more in the near future, my friend. It'll be awesome. All right, we got Purdue episode, guys. Make sure you check that out. I can't soon. wait. Can't wait to, can't can't wait to talk to you, man. Yeah. Sometimes so. September. Yep. Sometimes September. Yep, September. Be ready for the uh, – for the uh, cross spill the cheer full out chats Purdue episode that'll be a lot of fun. Hey, I'm not gonna have that high music you have. <laughs> it's all right. But I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll try to come. I'll try to like make sure I give you the good intro. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony, uh, the countdown tells me I have about a minute here, so I'm just gonna Perfect. say every, once again, everybody, spill the cheer podcast. Great job. Go subscribe. Give it a five star rating. Tony does a great job. So perfect. Appreciate it. Appreciate hey, it. Hey man, thanks, Tony. Appreciate it, buddy. Have a good day. Thank you, boss. Yep. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Yep. Antonio, a.k.a. Tony, uh, creator, host of Spill the Cheer podcast. He does a great job. I will be back on Thursday. But as we've already talked about, you got to have teasers, right? So I'm going to tease that, all right? I will post tomorrow who my Thursday guest is. Um, my clue is um, beyond. Beyond is my clue. Beyond. So uh, if you can figure it out. Let me know. But again, special thank you to Tony from Spill the Cheer Podcast. Uh, go subscribe to his podcast. It's awesome. And also subscribe to mine. It'll be awesome too. So um, if you have anything that I could 
uh, answer questions or have any suggestions for guests, please feel free to reach out. Either DM me here on Instagram or send an email to fulloutchats at gmail.com. So again, thank you, Tony. To everybody out there, stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you Thursday.